All right, let's let's just get down to it, Tim. So all right, let's do it. Before before we get to the origins of at the office bar and grill, I need to hear your origins with alcohol. So tell me your first ever alcoholic beverage story. Oh, so my first real alcoholic beverage story was I was a freshman in college, believe it or not. I really didn't drink. Um, I was the guy at the keg party, like holding the glass of beer and not really drinking it, but just holding the glass of beer. So I didn't look uh, a little family history there. So it was kind of like, yeah, you don't want to come home with beer on your breath or anything. So I was like paranoid. So I, uh, I would be the guy in the corner just holding a the same glass all night. So I was walking the halls of St. Xavier University where I went. I played baseball there and everything and was getting introduced to some of the guys, some of the older guys in the team. And one of the guys said, hey, uh, you know, rookie, you, you want something to drink? And I was like, well, you know, do you have a Coke or Sprite or something? He goes, what? And he threw me a Stroh's and he goes, don't be a jock all your life. So that was, uh, I drank a Stroh's. And uh, then I drank another one and another one. I think the next day I was very sick from drinking a Stroh. So nothing against Stroh's, but that was my first experience was drinking Stroh's in the dorms of St. Xavier. You went hard too with that. Like you didn't just Stroh's, like start oh. with the you threw them back. Look at you go. <laughs> I, I mean, throwing them back at that time for me was probably free, but without really drinking in the past, that was, that was enough to get you where you, well, maybe where you don't want to go. I was going to say, to be fair, like three is still enough for some very small people in the world here. It's me. Yes, I'm the small people. that is true. <laughs> so, OK, obviously, at some point, though, you chose to just not even be paranoid about the family history anymore and go completely to the opposite <laughs> with right. at, at the office sports bar and grill. So tell me how you just ended up embracing it instead of running from it. Sure. Well, I was in the security industry for 23 years, and I knew that it was, it was probably about five years too long. It was kind of time for a change. My actual career started at Little Eddie's Hot Dogs in the city at like 59th and Pulaski. And then I made the big move up to Wendy's because I lived about two blocks away. And I think I got about a 35 cents an hour uh, raise when I went over to <laughs> Wendy's. So that was big money. And though, yeah, big money, big money. Yeah. So um, I kind of got started in the food service industry, if you will, at, uh, at a young age and really enjoyed it. Um, as I got older, uh, I, I had a um, had an idea that I kind of wanted to um, get involved in, in the bar business. I have a good friend, uh, Billy Guidey, who owns Cork and Carry on Western Avenue. And he and I had talked about doing something by Sox Park. So um, we wound up finding a space and we've been there about 11 years. Now I'm a small, I'm a kind of a silent partner in the deal. It's really uh, Billy Guidey and Fitz and those guys that run it day-to-day -day operations. But I have a small piece over there, but it, you know, kind of helped uh, develop it and get that going. So that's Cork and Carry at the park. Um, and I you know, kind of liked coming up with some ideas for that. And I liked the business. And then uh, this opportunity came here about six year, years ago, I was good friends with one of the partners and there were five partners here at the office and five partners, as you can imagine, maybe not so easy to work with. So yeah. my friend, uh, you know, and I kind of talked and we worked out at the same gym and all that good stuff. And um, a business opportunity came up and my security uh, industry time was coming to an end. So I thought, OK, here's something totally different. Let's do it. And here we are six years later. So tell me about the name, which I love very tongue in cheek at the office. Yeah. At the, well, of course it's, I mean, where am I at? I'm at the office. You're not lying, honey. Where are you going to be home? I'm, I, I'm going to be a while. I'm, I'm still at the office. So it's a great name. Uh, we call it ATO a lot, obviously just because at the office is a little bit longer. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's a great name. It was not my original uh, name. I bought the name and bought the business and everything, but I do love it and people love it. And it's just kind of a fun where you at. I'm at the office. Yeah. And then you're I, not lying. So no guilt. Exactly. But the real pro tip is to just marry your drinking partner. Then you're good to go. That well, you know what? That's a better tip. And everywhere can be at the office. Exactly. Then you that's called working from home. <laughs> Ah, I like that. Well, in this day and age, that's uh, that's apropos. 
Exactly. So obviously yeah. there are a thousand bars, it seems, in like three blocks anywhere. So what um, sets apart at the office? Well, it's definitely uh, our food for sure. We are not your typical kind of sports bar and grill and, you know, just all fried foods and everything. We make most of our food from scratch. Our burgers are handmade. Uh, we cut our own boneless chicken wings. They're bigger than uh, anybody's around. They're better than anybody's around. So it's our, it's definitely our food sets us apart. I mean, a cold bottle of beer is a cold bottle of beers. Ours, of course, are the coldest, but, um, you know, bottle of Miller Lite's a bottle of Miller Lite. It's, it's kind of the same. Um, but I, I think that sets us apart. Definitely the food. We do a lot of really cool things here. Um, we do bingo a couple of days a week. We have live music here. In the fall, the one thing that really sets us apart is we are the South Side's only curling bar. So if you're familiar with curling, we actually set up curling sheets. It's synthetic ice. Yeah, I know. How about it? Uh, set up we set up synthetic ice um, out on our patio because like most places with an open patio in the winter, fall, winter, it's kind of useless. So I was looking for something to do and kind of fell into this and we said, let's do it. So we have a beautiful two curling sheets out there. We do leagues. You can host private events, parties, all that good stuff here at the office. That just changed the damn game. Yeah, right? Yeah. Literally it, it, to curling. It, <laughs> and it's the beautiful part of it is, you know, everybody likes getting dressed up in their warm clothes and it's right outside our, 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 we have a back bar area that's uh, kind of a semi-private room for parties and everything. So we play half hour matches um, in a half hour and nobody's going to get all that cold. And when it's over, you come on in, get a nice uh, drink, warm up a little bit, play a couple of matches um, every, uh, every week and people love it. So it's been uh, wildly successful and something totally different. So if you're ever looking for, you know, something to do in the winter, especially now, again, outdoors, most people are looking for something. Come and check out our curling on the patio. There's curling. Isn't there a Winter Olympics next year, too? This is I believe there is. And, oh you know, I, our, our curling is not quite the same. No sweepers, no running on the ice. Alcohol and running on the ice would make a bad combination, I feel like. But uh, the way we do it, it's safe, it's fun, and it's different. And you got to feel flourish. like it could make a good combination if you're looking at it from an entertainment standpoint, a yes, safety we've had, standpoint. We not have so much. had a couple of people when it is a little snowy or rainy, it does get a little slippery. And I always warn people and I say, hey, it's really slippery, guys. And sure enough, every now and then somebody, uh, takes a fall and it is funny and we watch it on cameras and no one's gotten hurt and that's the way we want to keep it but you know anytime someone kind of falls it's a little bit funny it's like oh, a yeah. guy getting kicked in the nuts you gotta laugh right it's it's not it's really also, funny but it's funny it's also a good gauge for like your age and how old you're getting if everyone still laughs when you fall you yeah, know you're exactly. good if it's immediate exactly. silence and like yeah, you, you right. know, you're getting old. You got to get. Yeah, when well, the next word is call 911 and, you know, someone's got a broken hip, that's bad. It's time for you to go. So obviously it. it sounds like a whole cast and crew of characters comes through the doors and at the office. We get a wide variety of people, ages, families also, because we I always tell everybody we are truly a restaurant first, but we have 30, you know, 30 TVs, a huge jumbotron. You know, we have the NFL Sunday tickets. So for football season, you know, people are like, hey, do you have the Cleveland Browns Seahawks game on today? I'm like, yes, we do. We've got them all. So in addition, obviously, to the Bears games, but that we have a million TVs here. So you can always get any game, um, you know, any game you want on any TV, pretty much. So theoretically speaking, yes. not that I would ever do this, but could I theoretically bring my child Two at the office, watch them curl and fall on the ice while I drink my beer and laugh at my kid falling? I'm going to say yes, but yes. then I'm going to say you're yes. responsible for your own child. So if you uh, yeah, want to put I your mean, child out there, yes, you could do that. Absolutely. That's why this was all theoretical, because of course well, theoretically, I Theoretically, because of course, right. Of course, you never, never do, do anything. Yeah, <laughs> Never do that. I got you. Right. I yeah. got you. Yeah. That would be a nice thing to do no. as a parent. No. My kid definitely secretly um, wouldn't also love it. 
you put a helmet on them and then all bets are off. Kids are pretty resilient. So tell me about this cast and crew of characters that comes through your door. Do you have any customer stories that stick out in your head as particularly memorable, either for being downright hilarious or maybe touching or just like, what the hell was that? So I'll give you, this is a story that's funny yet a little bit embarrassing, Ooh. but I'm not going to take full blame for it. So every night, um, this, and this was a few years ago, um, we say, okay, we're going to close up. And I have my right-hand man, Barb, back. He checks the whole house, make sure everybody's out, make sure all the doors are locked. And he comes back and he says, the house is clear and safe, which means, okay, fine, everybody's out. Now we can sit at the end of the bar for 10 minutes, have a little glass of wine, and then everybody heads home. So we're doing that. My guy does his check. And uh, all of a sudden we hear what I think is some sort of an explosion in the back bar area. And I think maybe a transformer blue or, uh, you know, an HVAC unit blue, something was loud and bad happened. So we start searching around, we go in the back bar area that's very dark. And there's one of my very good and very large customers on the ground. And what had happened was he was gambling and kind of in a dark corner was sitting on a stool where you couldn't really see him. And my guy overlooked him. I'll take responsibility. However, I got a guy who's supposed to check that. And I guess he kind of, let's not say he passed out. Let's say he fell asleep. He took a nap. And he took a nap. Took but a as he took a nap, he leaned forward and there was nothing to lean forward on. Fell over the stool, fell, went flying and scared the hell out of all of us. We were able to get him up. We did get him a taxi cab home. The taxi cab drove around, came back and said, this guy does not want to take home he, or be taken home. He wants his car keys and wants to drive home. So I had to talk to him like a little kid. No <laughs> names. But I said, absolutely not. I said, if you're going to make me fight you, I guess I'm going to have to fight you. But get back in the cab, go home. And the next day he did come back and picked up his car and was very apologetic. But that's probably the scariest, funniest, worst stories of our restaurant. There's a million, but that's a pretty good one. That's absolutely amazing. And thank you yes. so much for sharing but that with again, me. again, no one was hurt. No injuries. Nothing. No one was hurt. No we got him I home promise. and good. And and no one drove home. Go. Yes, we don't let anybody drive home that should not be driving. Right. Um, and this young man should not have been driving and, uh, he didn't. So yeah, all's well that ends well. I believe he probably had a pretty good hangover the next day. He had to God, That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. We don't mess around with yeah. that drinking and driving stuff. We don't do any of that. No, 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 no. Nope. Is there uh, anything that we didn't touch on that you want the people to know? Well, it's it just, uh, again, we're coming up to football season. Uh, we, we also like to work with the community. We do a queen of hearts raffle every week to benefit Park Lawn, which is a great charity. They help individuals with developmental disabilities. Uh, we've got a big car show coming up on Sunday, uh, 12 o'clock. It's a fantastic car show. It's a 9-11 memorial car show, and it's actually 9-12, but it's 9-11 uh, memorial car show. We're having it this Sunday um, in two weeks. Let me check my calendar. The 26th, we have a Park and Bark Car Show also, which uh, benefits Moondog Farms, a uh, wonderful organization that helps uh, homeless animals. They take care of them and they'll have a bunch of animal animals out here as well as a bunch of really cool cars. Uh, I guess we have a car theme going because every Friday, as long as the weather's good, we do a cruise night. So we have 100 to 200 cars come out here. It's a group called the Rat Racers and Life on the Streets guys. They're awesome. They come out and they put together a really nice e event in our parking lot. So if you're a car aficionado or you have a really cool car, come on out. And then of course, get something to eat and drink. But there's always something going on at the office. If you follow us on, you know, the old Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, I don't know. I'm probably <laughs> for Tinder. <laughs> oh no, wait, Tinder, that's something else. Uh, Maybe no, you that, should get on Tinder. Don't that's follow us on Tinder. Campaign. I don't think, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so all that good stuff. We always have something going on. We do a lot of Facebook live videos and all that. So you'll usually see my 
ugly mug on there telling you about what's going on in the week uh, during the week. So Thursday. Oh, ladies night. That's my favorite one. We give away a designer handbag. Coach Michael Kors, Kate Spade. Every single Thursday, we give away a designer handbag. What does it cost you ask to get into our raffle? Nothing. No purchase necessary. But again, hopefully you come out and eat something, you know, have something to eat, eat or drink. But we do a raffle every, uh, every Thursday, ladies night at 830. And we have our famous Cougar Teeny. Cougar Teenies on Thursday nights. So come check that out. Cougar Teenies really a French martini, but we call it a Cougar Teeny. Okay. So I, there I you was, go. I was worried cougar. that maybe you like had some drops of Cougar blood in there. And I was like, I, I think that that hey, really is yeah. it for the vegetarians, that. but that's Although, fine. Yeah, no, <laughs> we won't do that. But anyway, oh. yeah, that's about it. There's always something going on here at the office. Yeah. You got the curling, you got handbags, you got cars, you got dogs and you can get drunk. Yep. That, what could be better? Those are all of the and things. You can always say you're at the office and not get in trouble. And not get in trouble. We love it. Until someone figures out where what that really means. And you might get in a little <laughs> trouble. That's a problem for future you. Not right now That's you. That's right. Yeah. That's future exactly you right. deals with all those issues. Right. Well, this you has been it. fedorable. I love oh. it. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you well, so much for hanging pleasure. with us. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. We'll see you later. Thank you.